Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to integrate Braintree with your Bubble app. Braintree is a PayPal company and this will allow you to accept PayPal payments, either one-time charges or subscription payments. And we're going to be integrating with Bubble's Braintree plugin uh, to get this up and running very quickly. Now you can obviously do much more advanced customizations, um, a more advanced integration with Braintree if you use their API. Um, using that with the API connector will give you a lot more um, options and control over uh, connecting to PayPal payments. But this tutorial is going to take you through a quick start for um, accepting payments either single charge or subscription. And this is the main Braintree website. What I'm going to have you do is create a sandbox account to get started. So if you go to the login button up here and you can see at the bottom that uh, if you do not have a sandbox account yet, you can go to sign up here via this link. So Braintree works much like Bubble in that it has two separate environments, a, a live environment and a sandbox or test environment. Um, Stripe also works like this. So if you um, have been playing around with Stripe, uh, you'll see that there are a lot of similarities here with how to integrate these um, payment gateways. So to have a live account, you will need to apply for a merchant account. So make sure that this is something that you can do and that um, PayPal, uh, you know, you are eligible uh, to have an account with them. Uh, they have plenty of documentation for criteria. So make sure that you can uh, get an account with them before you get too deep into this. Uh, but you can create a sandbox account really quickly and get testing so you can see how the integration will look. So if you go to sign up here, uh, you'll see that the URL is braintreepayments.com forward slash sandbox. Fill out this form. Um, you will get an email to confirm the account and your email is going to look like this. I have a little screenshot here. Uh, save this email because it has some important links for you uh, to store your new login link, uh, where you can go to complete your um, application to create that live merchant account. Um, and then also this very first link here where it says this user information form that will help you uh, complete your sandbox profile so that you can get started. That's the first link you're going to want to click on. Okay, so once you do have uh, that sound sandbox account created, you're going to be taken to this dashboard, uh, the sandbox dashboard for Braintree. Now my dashboard uh, already has some graphs and stats here for me because I have run a couple of transactions, but when you have a brand new dashboard, you're not going to see these graphs. You're going to see all of the IDs that you will need to uh, set up your Braintree plugin in your Bubble app. So that will actually be here for you, very easy to copy and paste. Um, and that is going to go into your Braintree plugin settings in your Bubble app. So if you don't already have this installed in your app, go ahead and install the Braintree plugin and you're gonna see a few different fields here to enter in different keys and IDs. So you have three different fields actually, but one set of them is for live and then the other three are for your development or your sandbox keys. So you will have different values for the different environments. Right now, what I have done is place my sandbox keys in both sets um, just for while I'm testing. When I, you know, when you do have a live merchant account, you're going to switch these out for your live keys. Do it exactly what I'm doing here. Just put your keys in all of them for now. The sandbox keys, you're going to get a merchant ID that goes there, a public key and a private key, and then it just repeats. Um, but again, you're going to switch out the live ones when you do have your live merchant account. Um, now that will, again, those keys will be on the dashboard, but let's say that you uh, have tested some transactions and now you have this dashboard here and you don't have those keys anymore. Where do you go to view those keys um, afterwards? So go up to this cog icon here and go to API. This is going to be your home for all keys related to the Braintree API. So here we can see under API keys, here's my public key. And for the private key, it's hidden behind this view button. So I'm going to click that so that we can see it. And now it has been exposed. So I can copy that if I want and put it into my plugin settings. And you can also see here is my merchant ID. So these were the three again. 
All right, now these keys, you do want to protect them. They are very much like passwords. If you feel like they've ever been compromised, you can always create new keys um, and replace them in your plugin settings uh, and then delete the other ones. Okay, so now that I have all of my keys in here, there are only three actions uh, that Bubble has made available with this plugin. The first is to charge the current user, just a single payment. The second is to subscribe the user to some subscription plan. And then the third is to cancel that subscription plan. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I'm running the page as a user. So I'm just going to go to my app data go over to my all users and then run this, uh, run my page as this user here, jane at sample.com. Okay. And I have a test page here called Braintree where I'm going to have some buttons to trigger some charges. I don't have anything right now. It's all blank. So I know I'm running as a user that is required and I'm going to add a button to my page and this is going to say charge a uh, hundred dollars. Okay, now that's just the label for the button. So let's start and edit a workflow so that that charge can actually happen uh, when the button is clicked. Okay, so all of your Braintree plugin actions can be found under payment. You will see them right here. I'm gonna select this action here, charge the current user. We can see the payer email is being defaulted to the current user's email. You can change that if you'd like. The amount, I'm just gonna type in a static 100 like that. If you want to pull this value from your database, you know, if you're creating a shopping cart or something like that, and the, the total is being calculated, then you can certainly pull, uh, this value can be dynamic. And for this description, I'm going to say demo for tutorial. Okay, the button, uh, the, what basically when the user clicks on this button that I've created, we're going to see a PayPal generated form and there will be another button to confirm uh, and you can change what that button says. You also have the option to authorize the charge, basically put a hold on the amount, but not actually process it, not capture the charge. You'd have to capture it at a later time through your uh, Braintree dashboard because Bubble does not have an action to capture charges. Uh, that is something that you could do via API if you wanted though. So I'm going to refresh my page so that I can see my button and click on it we can see the PayPal generated form. So here it is, I will click that. And now I can see the PayPal generated form, it's loading up. So I have a couple options here. I can either enter in a credit card number and its expiration date, or I can be taken to a PayPal checkout form. So I'm gonna click on this so you can see what that looks like. You can see that it opens up a pop-up. Um, and because I'm in sandbox mode, PayPal's letting me know, hey, we're going to run this as if, um, you know, a user filled out their details with our normal PayPal uh, checkout form. Basically, what they will see is um, a login so that they can log in with their own PayPal credentials and it'll be connected to their account. And they don't have to enter in any credit card details because it's already saved to their account. Um, so if I proceed here, it's just going to pretend like I have done that, that I've logged in with PayPal. And you can see now it has me as some demo buyer. Okay, so let's go through that flow first. I'll click on pay now. And I should get a success message. There it is, your credit card was charged. Now if I go back to my um, dashboard in Braintree, and if we go over to, well, we should see here, I already have another transaction. I ran one transaction earlier. Uh, so let me go over to my transactions and I can see a full history of my transactions. You have a lot of options for filtering um, all of your transaction types. So I'm just gonna go with the defaults, which should just give me this month's list of transactions. And here we go, this $100 charge, which just happened, was made by my example payer. Uh, and there it is, I can see that it went through properly. Great, so now if I go back and let's say I choose the other payment method, which is just to fill out the card myself, um, I'm gonna do that now. So there are some standard test credit card numbers that you can run. Uh, Braintree's documentation has a list of these. Here's one that you can use, I use it all the time. It's just 4242 all the way across. This gives you a test visa number. And then for the expiration date, you just want anything in the future. So I'm just gonna do January, 2022. 
and I'll hit pay now. And I should see that success message again. There we go. And I will refresh my transaction search. And there is my third transaction there's with the credit card. Great, so that's how you can do one-time payments. And again, you enter in the amount here in the action. Okay, for subscriptions, go to the subscriptions menu in your Braintree dashboard. And then the first tab in this page is going to be your subscription search. This is where you can see all of the subscriptions that have been created with your account, whether they're active or not, canceled, pending, expired, all of the, the statuses you can choose here to filter things down. You can also filter by plan. So if I run a quick search here on all of my subscription statuses, I can see that I have one currently active on my standard plan. So the plans you create under the second tab here. I currently have two different plans created, standard and premium. The standard goes for 25, it's a monthly. Um, I can see you have one active subscription there, we just saw that, and then the premium is 80, and I have no subscriptions for that one. So I'm gonna show you what it looks like when you create a new plan. So I'm gonna do new plan here and we'll have to enter in an ID. Now you can leave this blank, technically you can, but if you do, Braintree will generate a random ID for you and I think it's a lot easier if you determine what the ID is going to be. It's gonna be a lot easier to identify. So I'm gonna call this Enterprise and I'm gonna give the plan name the exact same name as the ID just to keep things super easy. My Enterprise, let's say it is 200 and I want this to be a, uh, let's do once every 12 months. Let's say this is an annual um, billing cycle and I'll leave everything else the way it is. You can have add-ons and also discounts, but we're just gonna do a straightforward annual plan called Enterprise. All right, so I'll hit create and my plan should be created here. So here are all of the details. And if I go back up to the plans tab, I can see it has been added to my list here. Great. So if I go back to my page um, or the editor here, I'm going to add a button called subscribe to enterprise plan. Okay. So what I would do when I'm designing a pricing page like this or a sign up page where I have different plans available, I would have multiple buttons, one for uh, each plan. And so when I create a workflow from this button, the action I can use, it will be found under payment and it is subscribe the user to a plan. Okay. So the Braintree plan name, uh, let me refresh my editor because what's happening here is when you enter in your um, IDs and everything, Bubble is talking to your Braintree account and it's pulling in your plan names uh, dynamically for you so that you can uh, select the one that you want. Now I had just added the enterprise plan, so I'm gonna refresh my editor so that it can pull that one in now. Okay, so I'll go back to this workflow. Here we go. And now we can see the enterprise plan is now available. So I'm gonna select that since that's what my button is saying it's gonna do. And the next thing is I'm going to create a new user real quick because uh, Bubbles, Integration with this plugin, it makes it so that one user can only be subscribed to one plan at a time. So I already have users subscribed to different plans. Um, Henry is subscribed to my uh, standard plan and Jane, I believe, was subscribed to an old plan that I have removed. And I just want to create a new user so that we can start fresh here. So let's do Samantha at test.com. And I'm going to run as this brand new user, Samantha. You can see that I was playing around with two different buttons there. I'm going to refresh this page. Okay, so subscribe to Enterprise Plan. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. It's going to run that action. And we're going to see a very similar form to this, the payment form, but now you can see the button says subscribe instead. So I'm going to use the same card number, 42 all the way, and then a date in the future, hit subscribe, and I should see a confirmation message. There we go, my credit card was successfully entered and I've been subscribed to the plan, awesome. Now I'm gonna refresh my, or I'm just gonna go back to my subscription search and hit search down here. And here is my new subscription for the enterprise plan. If I 
uh, click on plan name there, it takes me to the plan details. If I click on the subscription ID, I get more information about that subscription. I can even cancel it from here if I wanted, um, but we have all of the info we need to check that out. Okay, now if I wanted to cancel the plan, uh, it is just a matter of running that last action that Bubble has available for you. So let's do cancel plan. And I will run here, this action, cancel the current user's plan. There's nothing really to set up. Um, it's just going to cancel whatever the plan the user is currently on. So I'm gonna refresh the page. And if we just make sure here, I can see that the status is currently active. So now I'm gonna click on the button, cancel plan. I have been canceled. Okay, now I'm gonna refresh this and my status should change. There we go, it's now canceled. Right, so that is how you can set up all of your um, actions with this Braintree plugin. It's a very straightforward um, integration to do your basic charge actions uh, from your app to your end users. If you need anything more advanced, more complicated than this, then I really suggest you work with Braintree's API uh, with Bubbles API connector plugin instead of this Braintree plugin that we've been using here. Also, do not forget that you will need to activate your account and get a live merchant account, which will give you new keys for the live environment, which you will plug in here um, so that you can start charging real credit cards. And that is all. If you liked this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching.